a land rover aficionado and an aqueous certified site server. Tonight he's going to be talking about the Lando local development Lando local development environment and showing us how it can easily be used to spin up local development environments for your projects. So not to ask you for that, do what you want with it. <laughs> now that's the end of the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, recording? Um, yeah, so hold on. Oh, yeah, I'm green. Um, <laughs> Mark already introduced me, but uh, most people here would know me because I hang around a bit. Um, bit of a Drupal person, but I mostly like weird stuff like CSS. Not really programming language, but I'll challenge you on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so today I am going to talk about Lando. It is a local development tool, sort of built around Docker to help you not make mistakes and save your time. So, has your local environment set up ever had you like this <laughs> or like this or like this? <laughs> then uh, you'll be amongst probably, I would say, 98% of people that don't have a giga brain. Um, I'm a front-end dev, and I hate things that are complicated, and I hate documentation, so it's really good for me when things just work, when I just type things that it says and it works. So that will also lead me into saying, I'm not an expert at this, but I've used it a lot, and... I can probably answer most of your questions, and if I can't, I can probably direct you in the right spot. The Slack, and there's a Lando channel in the Drupal Slack. It's really good. There's way smarter people than that with it. So, as you might have, anyone that likes Star Wars will know, Lando is a person, but not in this case. So don't try Googling it, because let me tell you, you'll never find the thing you're looking for. Um, so what is Lando? Uh, essentially, it's just like a wrapper around Docker. It makes easy, uh, makes it really easy to like spin up containers um, and, and different services. Um, and I guess the best thing about it is like they kind of just like seamlessly work together, and all you need is like a YAML file. So you get your Lando YAML file, and I just like type Lando start, and it just works. So as the person who hates Written documentation that's real good because someone smarter than me can write Lando file, which has actually ended up being me. So <laughs> <laughs> that can be a bit bad. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of good. So now you have like all this unlimited power. You sort of have this one file that controls all the services that you need. Um, but that kind of just sounds like Docker Compose. And the USA, it's not. Um, <laughs> Docker Compose is real good at managing Docker. I mean, they're both kind of, they both do the same thing. You can have a Docker file inside your Lando instance and use that Docker file if you want. I think you're wild if you do so. But um, in some cases, it's really helpful. Anyone that uses Lagoon will know if they use, they have like a Lando setup that also has a Docker Compose file in it. So they do work together, but I'm going to say 99% of the time, just have your Lando file and you're good to go. But they're basically similar, but not the same in the fact that Lando sort of wants to focus on having lots of different services where you want to have different, lots of containers with Docker Compose. So, Lando comes with this really uh, nice thing called recipes. And I guess they make it really easy for devs to just get started. Um, yeah, so just, we only really need to know how it works under the hood. All you need to know is that there's, there's a file in, in Lando somewhere that says that this thing exists, and these are the containers you need. Um, so, yep, just like a food one, but Docker, it, it's basically like a recipe, You're just telling like Docker what containers you need and what services you want. And I'll pull up a, a Lando file soon and we'll just dissect it. That might answer some questions that Mike said that people might have about performance. 
Is it on a Coke's machine? <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. Uh, I don't think I've ever started restarted Docker so many times. But if I figured out you can exclude directories, my God, that was a day. Um, so you can run there's recipes for lots of different things. So I'm guessing most people here are interesting. Ripple. Um, but you can run Laravel. Word, it's really good with WordPress currently. I've never used it, but a few problems at work that like it. Um, but yeah, so Laravel, Drupal, pretty much anything that you actually I haven't seen a .NET project fan that. <laughs> but I would argue that it's probably reason for it. Does um, it support .NET? I don't know. <laughs> Please refer to the documentation. <laughs> um, here is a very good screenshot of a Lando file. This is the config you need. Literally running Lando start will give you a Drupal 9 site. You will still need your composer file, of course. But yep, this will just, you can run Lando start, it'll give you a PHP version 8.1. As long as your files are in the web root, Drupal will spin up and run and it'll do all the aliasing and, and everything like that. You can access all your containers. Um, Lando has a bunch of command line uh, actually. So to come out of the box, supports Drush and everything like that straight out of the box. You can write custom ones for any other weird things. It used to support Drupal console, but not anymore. Oh, not out of the box. I mean, there are third party people that still use it. I don't know why, but I'm sure there's a reason. But yeah, you can see very little. Don't need to know much to know that this is just going to be nice and easy. When I first used it, I thought it was too good to be true, but I wasn't. <laughs> it actually worked the first time. And it feels good when it says boom, shaka, laka, theater. Um, so just like a food one, only configurable. So all the recipes are configurable in Lando, we can tell it, like, well, I'll just keep using the Drupal one because that's a good example and it's easy to make it easy to look up. We can specify PHP versions. If my web root's weird, I can put it there, change it. We can change, like, are you using Nginx? Are you using, I don't know, any other server type? We can that way and fine. Um, there's, a, there's a whole list of stuff you can configure on the recipe. Um, most of these things that are good are actually in the tooling of Drush, because you can imagine you don't want to remember aliases and all that kind of stuff. We can remember those things for you. But I guess the good thing is, is that you have this standard recipe, and you can sort of configure that to your heart's content, and it can just be used to replicate your production environment very, very closely. It's not recommended to use in production, but I've seen someone do it and it's fine. <laughs> use <laughs> under advisement. Hey, who was it? I can't, I'm not going to say. <laughs> no. It's fine until it's not. Because you wasn't. Don't tell. This is the no. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> we do use Lando to run Gov CMS projects locally. So. Yeah, no comment. No comment. Uh, <laughs> so basically, this is the the spiel from from the Lando website. Everyone should just be able to run git clone. So you commit the Lando file to your repo and just run Lando start, and that file should should have everything you need for everyone to get started. So you can have Elasticsearch already configured and everything like that. All the servers, mail holds really easy. There's lots of all those nice to have that just come out of the box that are kind of just annoying to use all the time. I can just, uh, I'll show an example later. I'm not very good at talking about it, but if you ask me a question, I can probably answer it. Okay. Um, that, that example of the Bitcoin and Lambda start, do you yep. assume you already have something that is Yes. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you, you can set one up by doing Lando in it, okay. and it has a wizard. So you can step through and it will give you, eh, we'll do one, okay. we'll do one. So if you just land a start, you get old Anakin. Mm -hmm. This is just filled with Star Wars gifts. This is my favorite thing in Star Wars when you get. 
And now we're ready to play. <laughs> so it'll give you a bunch of URLs that you can access. And as long as everything's configured correctly, you'll be able to go along and use your Drupal site. And we'll give you the install thing if you haven't imported your database yet. But you can write tooling around that too. There's commands already out of the box. Um, yeah, so this is a short overview. Uh, if anyone has any questions while well, I pull up a file, and I'll start an init. But yeah, performance is a question that people do ask. And Mike did say someone might have some questions about that. It's not okay. Yeah, yep. so um, he tried to run Lambda with GovCMS. Yep. Yeah. Not Lambda, not GovCMS on Lambda, but Lambda and CMS. Yes, I've got, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, you can run so alongside it. It is, it. it is possible. It is possible. Yeah. I was going to say that I've got, um, so now it's at the URLs. Yep. Yeah, so I have to use a different URL. To, so we might have one that's whatever, site.lando. Whatever. I have localhost. something. Dot, uh, port number. Hold on, I need um, For me, I'm going to show you later. But um, yeah, so it was at the start when I first started, when I started working with Bryn ages ago. It's like, we're doing using this thing. I'm like, cool. But I'm used to using it this way, having to work together. like, eh. So work that bit out, and yeah, it's not hard. Um, it's just once once you work out, like yeah, it's cool. But um, perhaps if you're trying to follow some documentation, it might not like the URL is never going to be the same. So each time you either start different yeah. sites up, it'll. Um, is there a um, feature indexing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look, other than a couple of, sort of standalone examples, I'm not just sort of in there, and I know it's fine. I can't remember someone else. Okay, so. down there, like, <laughs> um, it's you know, people are interested, but of course, I'm feeling a few extra more components perspective. Can you, hear my can you hear my computer from there? <laughs> it's on fire. Yeah. yeah. Let me it's tell you, my, my, my computer, I can run three, four. I've, I've at oh, once even had five Lando sites running and it doesn't work off like that anymore. Yeah. But I have the M1 yeah. okay. machine. Um, so this is, for me, sort of a really light version. Well, before this is the light version, everything from there up is like, I mean, you don't even need, you don't even need this PHP version. Like if Drupal recommends a PHP version, it will fetch that one. Um, I mean, technically, if you don't even have, if your web root's just the root of your project where the YAML file is, and you don't even need that. You can just do a name and a recipe, and it'll be fine. Um, these other things under here are, so we can define services here. This is where we might define Elasticsearch or some other service that you have. Um, but here I'm just saying, when the app server is built, just run Composer install. So I can just do Lando Starter, will do everything. This is where I can just write a bunch of commands. So I'm, I'm lazy. Um, and in here. Yes. Uh, you're, the most, you're the most efficient person I know. <laughs> I'm really bad. Um, so, another one that, is that actually, first question Has anyone used Lando before? Probably should ask that at the start. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Someone might be used to seeing this brush and then this. A big, not a big long one, but a short one that just defines the URL so that, mm -hmm. like, when you do drush things, it uses the right URL. We have come across this long command to always just be working no matter what project you put it in. So, this one will automatically alias the URLs that Lando provides to. Uh, hold on, I'll zoom out of this. Just so that you don't have to come in and edit this one every time. So I can just reuse this no matter where I go. As long as I change this name up here, I'll get different URLs and this will just work. Um, then we also have this excludes, I don't know what you call this thing, you know, object thing, something, um, where you can define routes that you want Lando to exclude because Docker is a hog. This is really good for vendor folders and stuff once you've already defined your modules or 
things like that. This is good for static files that don't really change often and, and things like that that will fastly increase your performance. Is that because neighbors creating copy so rather than a volume of it's creating a copy of your repo inside yeah, basically inside the container. Do you ever run into a problem where you're uploading something local and want to upload in your environment? Restart Docker. Is the answer to that one? <laughs> How often does that happen? Rarely, yeah. for me at least. Um, no, I don't think it happens that often. Um, if I ever run into issues, it's a mostly restart Docker thing, and if that doesn't fix it, then it's a off to Google. But if, if everything's working, if everything's working normally, you don't notice the replication. Nah, I don't notice any bugs. Use like when the containers first boot up, there's a bit of obvious, and it's going to take a bit of time, but it's usually pretty good. Um, just hope this is not for people with ionic vision. Okay, that's much better. I'm just gonna do Lando start. I don't think I've got the container running on my machine yet, so we'll see. Live coding, everybody. Very cool. Bring Yes, I want to suggest because I don't think the people on the will be able to do that. It is booting things. <laughs> I'll narrate this. Uh, <laughs> yep, booting things, booting <laughs> containers. Uh, Wait, waiting. Waiting. You'll you'll get used to this waiting one <laughs> when you first boot up the old containers. But put our thumbs for a little bit. Any questions while we wait? <laughs> um, Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, so here's the bullet shakalaka. Very cool. <laughs> and when you do Lando destroy, it gives you the old that paid the iron price. It's pretty good. Yeah, someone spent a lot of uh, time in this command line, I can tell. So you can see I have these app server URLs. Do I actually have a composer file in there? Okay, apparently. Let's see. Did you do it right? Yeah. Umami. And there's our Lando slide in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I have <laughs> things installed already, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, yeah, so it is seriously that, that easy. I mean, I'm not a very brilliant person, but I, if I can do it, I, I promise you, you can. Bit of time in the docs and the Slack group is helpful as well. Um, but yeah, I can use Grush now. I need to write the book. You know. Let me check my composer file. Look, I do need to. Oh, yeah, it's good enough. It's there. I can like run Lando Grush now. Let's get some very cool things. Yay. What do we want to do with our Drupal site? Go for it. Um, that really long, complicated line before that looks bogus and no one ever knows what it does since I do. So I'll just give you the right URL instead of default, mm -hmm. which has happened all the goddamn time and it was really annoying when I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, so, if I was to change my project name, yeah, that's cool now. Like this, mm -hmm. what? Really hard. My mouth is from the middle people. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's just a URL. It's nothing fancy. How's that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if I was to go back to, just tell me if I'm going on and on and on with this shit. Um, <laughs> and the projects, full one. Look, don't not put hyphen. Um, and I do Lando rebuild on this. This could take. But this will rebuild all my containers. Um, yes. yes. Um, this will rebuild my containers. With all of the, if I was to update more stuff in there, add a new service or whatever, to do that. 
Um, four ring seven, I made baby. Hell yeah. That's what happens when you exclude directories. Big more. Again, so by my <laughs> Very cool. Um, this would have been better if I excluded more directories. And it would have been quick, like a vendor folder, maybe. Um, so basically, you'll see now it'll do a full composer install. Blah. Things will be fine. Um, yeah, I think I'm sort of at the limit of sort of going on and on now. So you mentioned the version four. Oh, the version four. Yes. yes. There is so oh no, didn't take too long. So now you can see my URLs and stuff have all updated. I get some cool aliasing so I don't have to use local hosts anymore because I'm cool like that. <laughs> um Lando will tell you if these services don't spin up properly. I rarely run into that, but they'll be red. <laughs> They will sometimes still work when they are red. Yes. The like server side one? Oh, yeah. This? Oh, okay. Yes, I spend a lot of time in Lando Logs when I'm building things. That crashes and I don't get errors, and it just gives me the white page of death saying contact the site admin. <laughs> I don't know how to contact myself. So you'll, you'll see those in there. Yeah. yeah, right at the bottom. Very cool, time stamped. Cool. But yeah, uh, Lando 4 is coming out. Everyone should be very excited about that. They're moving to like a modular system. So it'll be very easy for people to contribute now. Uh, this was originally a project. Scandum is the company that does this. Yeah. yeah. Um, during COVID, they probably oh, 2020, maybe, maybe a bit earlier. They came out with Lando. It was just because of CPUs and Double Compose, really. Don't think they really wanted it to take off as much as it did, but it kind of did. Um, yeah, so it's really easy to use. Um, but they have now like taken up stock again and sort of had a giant meeting and decided what do we want from this thing? And the main thing was they want people to be able to contribute to it. It is open source, but right now it's kind of difficult. Um, so with the new modular system, hopefully we'll be able to run like local commands. So things that are not installed inside the containers, um, which will be very helpful. And then I can do away with things like a hoi. We've got some EMS people. I can just have all the tooling in my Lando file. So Brett's got a question. Yes, Brett. So I'd love. I'm going to read it. Yes, Oops, it should be. I would love to have a way to automatically adding our usual config to GovCMS SAS site. It's a learning curve. It can take some time to get used to set up in documents to share with the team. Oh, further up the chat. Okay. I didn't see it. It is the top one. Oh, you got reverse scroll. That's wild, Marge. A oh, wild person. Where is it? Down. Yeah. Sorry. So, so May is budget month for people and for government people, not so good to. Uh, could you use it to configure a GovCMS SAP provision site? With your usual config options. Yeah, we use it. So, for anyone that doesn't know, I used to work at a place called Annex with Marge. Um, and we basically ported every project we used to use Lando, including GovCMS projects. We did have a bash script for a while, both Marge and I, to spin up all the config that was required for GovCMS that would just pull the GovCMS repo and do all the things. And then, yeah, just go for your life kind of thing. Um, we did plan on making that open source, but Nigel kind of left, and then I kind of left. And now I don't have access to it. But I mean, if there was still appetite for that, I'd be happy to pull up what I can, can with that kind of thing and provide that to people if they want it. They can be. Absolutely. Another code base, right? Kind of. It's a bit of fiddly around, but setting up. Like Lando's good at handling the container side. 
all of the other stuff is kind of just a human problem because all the things kind of exist already in the repo that are needed. Um, of course, you need a bit of common sense, like don't add modules because you can still do that. But I mean, these guys will shut you down on the other end anyway. So <laughs> that's a problem anyway. Yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah, we use it on plenty of those sites. Yep. Uh, uh, I think they've just announced it. It's still Lando 3, and I think maybe for two or three more releases, it will be, still be Lando 3. But I think halfway through the year, they're planning on releasing Lando 4. I think there is a beta version out there. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm looking forward to yeah, writing my own thing. So currently, we can write our own recipes and stuff like that. Um, they're really handy. Uh, at Icon, we talked about maybe writing our own recipes so we don't have to have a giant file like that. Oh. Just like a one file thing that just says recipe, Icon, Drupal 9, or whatever. Uh, but it's kind of a nice to have and doesn't really need to happen. Copy the Lego file from one project to another and just change the name. Um, but yeah, I think it will open the gateway for all of what people that are. There are some frustrating parts for Lando. It does take a lot of resources. Kind of sucks to be tied to Docker as well, considering Docker's kind of maybe indicated that they may go to a, a model. Yeah. So people are a bit scared about that. So Lando 4 will open the way to not be tied to Docker, uh, tied to some other containerization, if you will. Uh, but yeah, I think. Lender is a great product. Uh, it's open source, so the people who love it, who love open sourcing, <laughs> not a wiener. Um, but yeah, it's really easy to get started, and I think everyone should use it. Like, I don't know, I don't really like it, Sam, and all those bits. That's fine. Um, when you look in the public and you're positive, how do you get I've set up my certificates beforehand. Uh, it, it provisions its own certificate. Uh, you can just provide that to Chrome or Firefox. I'm sure if I open Safari right now, I'll, I'll get a warning. Yeah, it, there's a folder inside the Lando directory that has all the certificates. Um, there's documentation around how to add those. Yeah, yeah. Firefox is the one that is the most famous because you actually have to like. We can't just do it like that. Yep. Yeah, I had any issues with like enterprise and stuff, and I can run these installed on it's like <laughs> No, never ran into anything. We have some dude runs it on Windows that don't act stand on oh, yeah. Windows. Oh. But I mean it works, so that's fun. Good. So we can have people on different machines, different versions of machines, even. You can see yeah, my, my is running on an Intel machine. I've got an M1. Obviously, it's going to run better on the M1 than the Intel machine, but it does run. <laughs> so, I like, so everyone told if you me like anyway. Spacecraft, very good. <laughs> and the heater. Yeah, yeah. Wind, which is in great. The, in winter. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> Zero years. <laughs> nah, Star Trek's all right. It's not even Star Wars. I didn't. I, I was interested in your like, your best moment in Star Wars from episode one. I grew up with Phantom yeah. Menace. Uh, yeah. And Did you know there's more? Prequels, are great. <laughs> prequels are great, man. They're great, but I love all Star Wars. That's just like I just have this vivid memory of my like whenever I think of Star Wars, man, that's what I think of. And you especially like episode one. I don't like taxes and shit, but it's all right. <laughs> episode one's all right. That's my favorite Jedi in it. I, mean, I don't want to make this political. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite Jedi in it, man. Okay, That's so it. Who's your favorite Jedi? Why is on? Rip. Rip. Um, yeah, so if no one has any more questions, I will unplug my machine and zoom back out. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very Jesus, much. Jesus, look how zoomed in I am. Oh, wow. You can read it from over there. Thank you, for your system. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brent. Thank you very much for putting that together. If um, anyone has any more questions, they can just message me on Slack or they can just talk to me. Should we should we do like a five minute comfort break or is everyone keen to just get rolling into the okay. No. Okay, wow. cool. All right. Uh our next speaker for tonight, <laughs> who I imagine some of you are familiar with, is uh Danis Oldman. He's the technical practice lead at Hide and Seek, and his work specializes in cloud and cybersecurity architecture for enterprise projects. Uh, he's been working with Triple for over 12 years now. And tonight we'll be talking about security scanning tools for the essential egg on Drupal. Uh, yeah. cool. I'm in the I, I'm in the meet, so I can share my screen if that. Yes, works. that would be That'd wonderful. Be great. Yeah. 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 What, a, what a great idea! You don't look at me. <laughs> I don't even want to stand up. Not <laughs> me. <laughs> Um, and so Lender does have its own reverse proxy for the yeah. Um It's supposed to be, and I looked about the Lender, it takes it to the four ages and use it to the four. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, what, in my experience, Sometimes it doesn't work, and I just do the end of rebuilding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You can define the port. I think yeah. that's why you say yeah. define the port. Um, and you can set a certain environment variable which will make the end of work. Yeah. So we're just going straight into this, right? Yes. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, fancy presentation by. HMS. Uh, and uh, thank you very much to Bree and Dan for organizing this. Uh, they actually flew me into uh, from Melbourne to do this presentation. So that's pretty big commitment. I think that's an extra, just an extra step for an open source community. I think it's really cool. So uh, just a bit of info about me and my current title in the project is Enterprise Architect. I've got 14 years of experience working across the LAMP stack, uh, WordPress, Joomla, mobile, Drupal, everything. Currently, technical lead at hide and seek, and uh, going to be talking about cybersecurity in Drupal, and uh, uh, a lot of interesting things that I found along my journey as I was hacked multiple times. <laughs> I spent countless nights um, debugging and cleaning up websites with bad architecture. There's some prizes, some small prizes, and some quizzes too that are stuck in the presentation today. So, Bree over there will give. Um, Super special prize. <laughs> if whoever works out the secret gets special prize. Yeah. All right. So, uh, just super brief. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about essential aid, which is uh, I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, we'll talk about scanning, reporting, updating, firewalls, basically all the different things that you need to do in order to not get hacked. We'll talk about uh, self-hosting Drupal, sometimes you need to do that, especially in the government requirements where you need to, um, uh, you know, when you are working in a high security workloads, you are you have your workloads running in Asia, they don't want to, they don't want to share your data anywhere else. For example, Acquia backs it up to Tokyo region, right? And some, some government would say, hey, I don't want it. I don't want my data to go to Tokyo, it's too sensitive. I want the data to be in Melbourne or in Sydney. And then they self-host it and then they get into trouble. Uh, so we'll like walk through that and walk the difference between enterprise uh, cloud hosting platforms, right? Acquia, Platform Stage, Einstar uh, versus uh, self-hosting it. What are the implications? What are the issues? Uh, there is a questionable ethical demo of hacking live site on on the on the call. We'll try to do that as well. Um, um, no, no, I had to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just uh, questions and summary. So, uh, starting with a story about Log4j. <laughs> <Blog4J. laughs> oh, somehow everyone is like smiling. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like um, this. Anyone had one of those on their own site ever? Oh, wow. I would never do it. 
<laughs> so what happens when you get one of those? It means it's too late. Your site has been injected. They've changed the payload. It's loading some JavaScript. It's loading, it, you know, whatever it's doing. Google Chrome picked it up, and it's telling everyone that it's bad. Your site disappears of Google. It's delisted. All that SEO effort you put in is gone. So multiple clients have poured, poured thousands and thousands of dollars into SEO to try to get in page Google One. For example, yeah, one company I used to work for, right? Like fifteen thousand dollars on articles, blogs every month for five years. One of those, they're gone off Google for three months. They reappeared on page sixteen. It took years to climb back up. So it essentially destroys your site reputation. Um, so uh, back to log 4 story is very interesting because government really didn't mind that much what you're running, what kind of tools you can scan. It's just like, oh, the website's up. That's not good. And then uh, kind of privately, I found out because working for some federal government clients that um, about 80% of infrastructure was affected by log 4 vulnerability data was stolen. Stuff was deleted, removed, destroyed. And we're talking like big things, big blocks of government operation ports, uh, things like that, right? A lot of sensitive information leaked. Um, and uh, the government started to go, oh, maybe we should have a look at everything that hasn't been hacked yet and see what are we doing about it. And uh, then um, I got a call from a client uh, and they went, can you please tell us how you comply with Central 8? It's been there for a very long time. No one knows what it is, but we actually have to make sure that it's done. Can you please have a look at where we're at? And uh, can you please tell us um, uh, tell us uh, whether we're compliant or not and what we can do? Anyone uh, can work out mm, something not right with this PHP file? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is, looks a little bit out of place. Uh, so that's how this thing happens, right? So. This is the end result, but your site gets injected. I'll, I'll, I'll talk through different methods how it happens. And then your PHP file gets uh, a nice present, a nice extra a little bit of line of code. This is uh, called a heuristic logic uh, injection where the virus is so clever, it's actually encoding itself. So it does, if you try to match the pattern, it will not be the same. It will always be different in every site because it's using some random string. It's passing a random string through base64. It's encoding it. And you don't actually know what it is. It's probably uh, he's trying to, you know, do one of the bad things that it does. So, uh, going back to essential aid, the government brought to my attention that there's something called essential aid, oh, which is a <laughs> cybersecurity maturity model that requires us to do a lot of things. Uh, so, the, the definition is yeah. So, it's a framework for organizations, specifically the government, because it's developed by Australian government, to improve cybersecurity posture, reduce risk uh, of successful cyber attack. And it's a set of strategies both for mitigation and remediation. Um, when I talked about it with the developers, they're like, oh, yeah, no, we just write JavaScript. We like React. <laughs> it's like, yeah, React is the best. But then, okay, so then they, some of the stuff specific for Drupal would be, you know, patching, scanning, multi factor, backups, network segmentation, and many more other things. But um, it's actually, uh, Drupal is really not there uh, because, uh, the, for example, when they, when they told me, do you scan twice a day your dependencies in Drupal, we weren't even thinking like, is there a tool that does that? Uh, because, um, you know, like say if you're using Composer, uh, <laughs> you have a dependency of the dependency of the dependency that is using a dependency that hasn't been updated for five years. Mm -hmm. And then if that dependency is vulnerable, you get the red screen dead. Um, it's good on Acquia and platform SH because they block the file system. So even you get injected, they can't write. But I'll talk later about the self-hosted systems. That's where they can write to the file system very easily. Like, you know, we're talking Bluehost, Crazy Dates, GoDaddy, Net Registry, all those um, shared hosting platforms that are cheap. And a lot of the government still use that and <laughs> is uh, very unfortunate because uh, there's no tools in place to mitigate that. So when it happens, it's too late. Uh, Drupal can be exploited uh, specifically. Most common one, 99% is SQL injection, uh, but there's also denial of service, distributed denial of service, file inclusion, cross site scripting. Um, SQL injection is a really interesting one. We'll talk about that. We'll show some slides and uh, I'll talk about the denial of service one because uh, that's my favorite uh, one. This one here. 
Um, it's quite funny. So a company that's selling, um, uh, you know, you 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 buy, um, you put money in the account and you bet on horses. They make ninety percent of their money during their uh, races in Melbourne, right? And they get a phone call, but five days before the races, and the hacker says, "We're gonna bring your site down for one hour. Watch, watch." Then the site goes down for one hour. Then it comes back up. Then they say, "Okay, we just want fifteen, whatever, hundred fifty thousand, three hundred thousand, one million dollars. Otherwise, during the races, your site goes down forever. You're not making." Money. And that's done using this redundancy service attack. So this vulnerable code that you saw might infect your computer to become part of the botnet, which will then form one of those attacks, become a participant in one of those mass attacks that will be nice service to the um, yeah, to app. So this thing. And uh, protecting can be done with patching, obviously restricting privileges, multi-factor backup, network segmentation, a lot of other things. Um, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment, but uh, it will not help if you have really bad architecture in the beginning. So there's the little quiz that I uh, put on together today. So when uh, this is actually a real situation from my previous workplace, uh, there was an architect who said, you're just a dev. And he said, this is how all of our sites are handled. Um, and I went, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, so who wants to give a crack at, well, it's not that difficult, but who wants to try to see what potentially might be wrong with this? For well, security, performance, that's a HD access. Uh, that's how the DNS is handled for three sites. So that's the dedicated server with um, three directories in it. Uh, yeah. Yep. Anything else? The host, host file type like the uh, input server would happen to pick that up, HTML. Yeah. 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 Lose one, lose them all is probably the, so I think uh, you deserve a gift. Wait, oh, do we have a gift? Oh, 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 genius. Write that down, everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so anyone else wants to pick up a couple of scenarios where this could go horribly wrong if this is not fashion production? They ran like that for two years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Drupal get in was when I was employed there. <laughs> so that's a horror story, right? So uh, let's see. Anyone else wants to try? No, that's it. Um, okay, I'll I'll try to summarize. Right, IP address is only one IP. It's not masked by. It's not proxy through any CDN. If you do an S lookup, you see the IP. You can hit the IP. Um, all of the sites are on the same server in the web root directory in public HTML directory. Uh, so when our uh, when uh, we had um, so that was that was production and dev and state. Uh, and that's how they had HD access. Apache was routing traffic to uh, the three different applications. And as a result, um, when the Drupal getting happened and we got exploited in production, uh, every single PHP file got basically written. You got that base64 problem in there. It went all over the place. It then has infected all the backups because all the backups were in the same direction mm -hmm. too. And it corrupted all the backups and renamed all the files. And then it also screwed up the dev and the stage was at it. The backups were on the same server with production and dev and stage. Um, and it was a self-hosted server because, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you try to do any antivirus on this, you already <laughs> lost your game and uh, because uh, you're just asking for it here, right? So uh, with this system, um, I remember Drupal getting happened. Uh, everything got destroyed. I had to manually clean up 700 files because we didn't have a backup because every backup got destroyed. Then I went into the database and manually cleaned up the database. And then uh, it was done at 4 uh, a.m., uh, so 9 a.m. to 4 a.m., and I got a $100 gift card. 
So oh, that's pretty good. That's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, the U.S. Um, air, the the U.S. Uh, also had the same site, but someone else was managing the U.S. site, and they couldn't have cleaned it up. So they hired a cybersecurity agency to do it, and they got a bill of eighty thousand U.S. dollars for emergency remediation from a consulting company, and they paid that bill. Cool. I found out later. Mm -hmm. None of the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so that's that's when we talk about architecture, infrastructure, blah, 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 right? So obviously if you're using a proper, like a proper hosting solution uh, and not hosting it yourself or not trying to save money, you're using something big, you're never going to have that problem, right? You're going to have stage, prod, everything, pipeline, CICD tools, backup, restores, all that stuff. Awesome. Uh, and then, of course, you have the code problems too. Uh, if anyone wants to give it a... Uh, see if there's a potential maybe something not right here yeah. yeah, yeah. that's right he just gets the input from the post right that's right yeah that's it so uh <laughs> bad 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 <laughs> and so seeing a lot of that too so the segment's not prepared we're not using we're not taking advantage of the awesome APIs that we have in Drupal, Drupal API, blah, blah, blah. We are, so here is an example of where we are passing it through for a name parameter, right? So it's, a, you know, rather than just writing the whole SQL thing, uh, this will um, make it much harder for an attacker to inject. Um, but a very easy mistake, like three lines of code, red screen of death. If you're a government, you're screwed. Uh, if you are a if you are using this for SEO, you build up a good reputation, you drop, you go on. Um, uh, yeah, um, Drupal get in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what has, uh, yeah. So Drupal get in, um, tried using a GitHub repo, couldn't make it work, rewrote thing in uh, Bash to make it easy. Uh, it, this uh, is really interesting. So the script is utilizes uh, just a normal library, 64 lines of code. It uh, because of lack of sanitization, um, the, the Drupal 837 and down and Drupal 737 and down did not have the sufficient input validation in the core. Uh, attacker could inject arbitrary code, basically run anything he wants, uh, and get access to the server and just run. To make a new file, he could uh, move the settings file where the database password is there, and uh, he could, uh, you know, do a SQL dump and then download that dump uh, straight from the public directory. So easy. Um, uh, if anyone wants, I will post the link. You can try it yourself. Um, I've set up a Drupal 8 site, um, and uh, all it takes, uh, this thing takes uh, one parameter, URL. And then the second parameter, any command you want to run in the, uh, as a shell. So you can go uh, touch index.html in the main directory, the whole thing is gone, and you just get a blank page. So that's easy. So easy. Uh, that's Drupal core, right? So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that, yeah, that's the GitHub repo if you're interested. Uh, let's read that look. Um, so obviously what the government wants us to do is it wants to scan every day uh, for dependencies or using heuristic logic. We want to, so the heuristic logic scanner is a specific tool that scans the files for anything that might be a virus, but not sure. So for example, that base 64 encoding is an injection, but it's different on every site. So you can't like just do a comparison string to string, right? You need to kind of go, hmm, maybe that doesn't look right. So heuristic logic scanning is uh, a really important thing. And it, if it picks up, it's 95% chance there is a, a problem. But no, most people, have anyone heard about heuristic logic scanning daily? Many people have, no? Yeah. yeah. And it's, and so when I, they told me, okay, Daniel, so how do you make sure we scan every, every day? I, I had to go, well, you know, actually, the tools are, are hard to find. If you ask 100 Drupal developers, how do you do that? They'll be like, hmm, well, I know, maybe WordPress is easy, but uh, Drupal, like, how do you scan for log4j, which is a fourth level dependency in a composer file? How do you know that that's not the rule? So uh, here is a composer file for a client that we manage. Everything looks um, all right, except um, the problem is with. Um, uh, this fastly module. Anyone has any idea why? Perfect. 
uh, strict version. We keep updating everything, but the fasting module is going to be 3.4. And when in one year later, when they hire someone else to manage it, some you know when the project is finished, they got someone else to do it for you. When um, that module becomes vulnerable, who will tell them that this is the one that can be like, can bring your whole Drupal ecosystem down? Uh, you need the scanner for that. And the scary one is that if the Fastly module that's strict and locked to 3.14, so see if it's like this, that means that it's at least two, but whatever the latest version is going to update, but that you will stick at 3.14 all the time. And uh, that's a really big problem, uh, but a lot of people just ignore it. But uh, the Fastly might be relying on a vulnerable component, so that needs to also be uh, checked and scanned, and the government wants to do it daily. and. Uh, so we have to develop quite a lot of tools to do that. Uh, Side guarding is a really good tool that does uh, any PHP, uh, but it's a paid thing, but it's really cheap. It's 10 euros a month per site, Ukrainian company. Uh, same as audit.io, uh, started by a friend, uh, also does the same thing. Uh, firewall is really interesting. Uh, there's two types, the way I see it, the ones that work on instance and the one that works at CDN level. CDN level is really clever. This is a cloud player. I mean, Acquia gives it to everyone. Uh, um, there's also Fastly and Akamai, AWS and WAF, and so many others. But this is a really good one because it recognizes, like, it, it scans for deep packet signatures of the attacks for injection payload. And then it's going to use AI to determine whether a request in real time might be a malicious request. And it's going to destroy it without even touching your um, site. And it actually is actually free. You can proxy your site for that. It also gives you a free SSL certificate. And so it maintains a real time um, machine learning, the database, and signature based heuristics. So that's what we talked about the heuristic logic. So there's a signature of how something gets exploited, what kind of payload is being sent. And that's how it will uh, uh, block it even before it hits your site. So uh, if you're proxying your DNS, it will pass over lots of hide your IP. If you then do a HTTP malform HTTP request or injection of some signature that matches the logic that they know, it's going to destroy it before it even hits your site. So even though your site is vulnerable, you're not going to get uh, affected. Unless you're exposing your IP address, then just hit the IP and it's gone. Uh, Cloudflare. I can, if anyone wants, this is a Cloudflare dashboard. Uh, you can put it under attack mode. Uh, ChatGPT is using Cloudflare at the moment because too many people, too many bots are trying to scrape it. So. It's really good. Uh, it's really free. It gives you uh, lots of dashboards to understand where your attack's coming from. Also, use this really effectively to block um, every country in Australia for the clients because they keep getting spam and it works perfectly. That's good. Uh, okay, I will see if I have time for remote code execution in a second. We talked about heuristic logic scans. We talked about antivirus mm -hmm. solutions. Antivirus solutions. It's a little bit too late. Um, when you run have an antivirus because it's already been injected, already been infected. So, uh, but yeah, um, there are solutions. And uh, for example, so this GitHub repository is really good. It's a composer dependency security checker. Uh, it can be run as part of the CI CD. Uh, and what it will do is every time you generate your composer log file, it's going to scan it and tell you, hey, log4j is there and it's not patched. And then it will not let you push the code, something like that. So, but that's a manual thing. So that's like, there's no real tools that are out there that are, so that's a great opportunity to enter the market at the moment because the government needs it. However, Acquia, and what, no one's done it. Like I've been trying to see if there's an all in out of the box solution, it doesn't exist. So we have to experiment, we have to do these things. Uh, hosting uh, is interesting, right? Because uh, Drupal's open source can be hosted everywhere. Platform such Acquia Pantheon, essentially safe because they're doing your own scanning, patching, and they're using Cloudflare, Fastly, CDN to, Actively, kind of, kind of like a, you know, that in, uh, what is it? In Israel, there's like this dome, uh, the dome, right? So the rocket is flying and the fence, yeah, and it just explodes the missile before it hits the land. But uh, if you don't have the CDN, you're on your own. You have to, kind of, okay. Self hosting, um, cheap, uh, but problem uh, because you have to do all this yourself. You don't get the support. Uh, Tenable, uh, anyone heard of Tenable before? Uh, it's really great. Uh, Tenable, uh, that's the Tenable website, it's a proprietary thing. It, it allows an agent, it can basically gives you a Linux agent that you self-host on your VMs, and it will report 
uh, or and it was scanning, but it will not send it online if you don't want it to be. So that's compliant with a lot of the essential aid. A lot of the antivirus solutions that are out there not compliant with the Australian government because they are leveraging cloud scanning. So you have to kind of send your vulnerabilities out in the middle of nowhere to be scanned and then get a report. And that's an extra level of responsibility for government. So they don't like to take the risk. Danable provides your Linux uh, distro. You run it on your host, and then it's going to tell you everything that's wrong. And uh, so this business here, Intruder.io, I don't know if anyone anyone's heard of it, really popular, uh, is actually just uh, piggybacking of tenable agents that are sitting there. And it's just using you know, APIing in and um, giving you vulnerability weakness. So that, it's all good. Um, recap, no one's seen the red screen of death before. Seriously, yeah? I'm on a slide that I managed, but I've yeah. seen them before. No, so seen so, so. I've been, I've been brought into the society. The leading products self hosted. Yeah. And then they've got twenty sites and one of them going back in the beginning. Yeah. And so gone. Gone. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's nice because I, I started to, to write, I had my own business and I was doing small websites in Drupal Joomla mm -hmm. and uh, I hosted them on shared hosts. When I started, and I thought everything was going great. I wasn't really just started getting hacked <laughs> um, <laughs> really <laughs> badly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Drupal in itself is extremely secure. Um, yeah, normally, WordPress has a uh, number modules because <laughs> it has a lot of issues. All right, that's my presentation. Uh, yeah. um, that's the way if you have any questions. I'll try to ask as much as I can. Uh, I have the risk of being this long. I, I, <laughs> I have yes. listed a question more of like just an experience that I'd like to share. Um, uh, last year, we did a process of evaluating any virus providers for our clusters in New York and all, um, alongside CrowdStrike. And you mentioned that once you're, once you're at the point where any virus is talking to you, it's too late. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say that I think that's still really, I wouldn't suggest that people, that people walk away from it and not focus on it. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's the antivirus that's telling you if something's wrong. It is too late. You are infected. Something's got in inside you. Yeah. Um, and what we found with Tenable was that we didn't have a strong active scanning capability. So, for example, Tenable, we could configure it to get a scan every hour or every day. But with CrowdStrike, it would be constantly online, constantly scanning. Right. And it was a surprise for us. But the other thing that we did after our job was we could watch that thing. So we could say, for example, if somebody was expecting an opportunity to offer it, mm -hmm. we could raise an alert and that thing. And so we'd not just see that there's a virus that's not known, but that there's a, a user, either yeah. malicious or not, who's kind of flipping and having a look around, trying to see what might be one of those, and that can stop. Something from happening before it becomes clear. Yeah, that that's right. Um, in, and it is a requirement in the essential aid. You know, the, the government requires you to do antivirus. Um, and you know, I guess like for me, when I was a small business owner, it was this. The thing was, Google takes about three to four days to pick it up. Antivirus takes twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. So it's better that I find it. Question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Um, uh, oh, Gil uh, answered all the questions, um, but I didn't see. I'm so sorry. sorry yeah, my bad. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Is there an argument for compile static him so it's what? what, what? So it's, so it's, oh, yeah. Hang on a second. I'm trying to understand. Compile static. He wants to know if it, is there an argument for using the static side generators, I think. Oh. Yeah, converting the triple side Yeah, converting into triple side to Yeah, that's great. So uh Drupal is vulnerable because of the database and PHP. If it's static, you can't hack a JPEG image. You can't hack a JPEG image on in an S3 bucket, right? You cannot. Well, you can try. Uh, but uh, it will be impossible <laughs> almost, right? So you can scrape your Drupal site. This is this is actually a really good strategy. Scrape the site once it's done, 
uh, but you have to make sure the contact form is not obviously won't be able to post to a PHP because it's scraped. So it has to post uh, to some API. Um, and as long as all you do is just you know do that, then if you stick that into an S3 bucket at an SSL certificate, you get secure, scalable. You don't have to worry about hosting it. You only pay as much as you need for it because it's an S3 bucket and it's a static site. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the scary thing, uh, the reason why we are really worried about scanning is because so it's like injection through the most likely like an API, web form API, REST API, or um, if there's a contact form on your site, if they just put a SQL injection inside the contact form field, they submit the form and it drops your database or dumps the output. So if there's no database, you can't really change, you can't really edit a static site, which is really good news. So that's a great question. Um, and that's like an ultimate, <laughs> um, ultimate solution for security, but uh, yeah. That's what Brett just said. If there's only no such, sorry, if there are only no such thing as content updates. Well, you could do that still. You can, there are things you can do to, mm. you can use like time module, for instance. Mm. Like that's just a simple module that just static, just makes the site static. Mm. So. Yeah, as long as you don't have a contact form, it's really good because anytime you make a content update, you just press them and mm. compile and you just make the disk directory your root directory. Yeah, uh, or, or you could RDP into a protected VM where oh. Drupal lives, do your content updates. You have like uh, RDP accounts for everyone who needs to do an update with SSO. And then uh, once you finish your CICD pipe, I would scrape it and just uh, okay. commit it as HTML static. Easy. No. Super solution. Someone says that they had a static Drupal site, but it still got hacked via the Linux kernel. Oh, well. If the hacker really wants to get to your site, there's no solution. What were no you doing? Well, I'm just. S3 bucket. S3 Sorry. Bucket. Sorry, John. Sorry, John is speaking. I was trying to turn my sound up. Oh, Did you want to speak? Oh, yes. Uh, I would like to say um, yes, there was a, a static website on Drupal 6 I made, but it was hacked because the hacker get paid very good so if you're the hacker get paid very well there is no solution <laughs> yeah if you're desperate and you offer a lot of money you'll find a way <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> And then with S3 bucket, there's still the root credentials and IAM credentials and AWS CLI and people use install that in their terminal and then they, you know, don't patch the Mac at home and then boom, um, they get some someone Microsoft support of a team viewer logs in to help you out, right? And then boom, on your back, on your yeah. back. <laughs> and uh, that's how Uber got hacked, right? Um, yeah, IAM credentials in the cloud. Yes, yeah, sorry. No, I, 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 yeah, but that's great. But I just have a question. Now, when you say Google is on the web, or starting to is it possible, like, to reduce the question on the Yeah. To reduce it, or like, or some, you can say, like, you can decouple the database from the, but the, I guess that the, um, the the logic behind the attack is like this. Here, I have a, a PHP file, right? Um, the PHP file will load something from the database. Uh, if, if PHP, like, see how that file is injected, right? In the very beginning. Um, just give me a second. So how did that happen? Does it matter if it's like a Postgres or MySQL or RDS? No. Uh, because uh, they injected the database because some query here, like that input, right? Like what we talked about, the code thing. If it's not sanitized properly, they will inject it. So it doesn't matter what back, what database you use. The only way to stop hacking is to make it non non um, yeah, make it static and remove the database. If there's a programming language behind the scenes that generates uh, dynamic content, you're gone unless you protect it. Um, but I think like if you stop um, PHP files being written using Linux tools, like what host, professional hosts do like Acquia, right? Like you commit to prod, even if I try to, even SSH into prod, I can't, uh, I can't like edit the file using Vim or anything like that. Yeah. 
So uh, read only, it's very good. Uh, but anything with a database uh, is hackable. Everything, but then imagine you just have an image. In a, 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 you just uh, have a, a photo, a JPEG on on the link. Like you can't hack it. it there's nothing to do there, right? So <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> I know you can. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There we go. So many. It's a great read. No, it's great. It's just really <laughs> complicated at once. Wow, look at that. Oh, yes. Alex, how did you get that? Yeah, so what, what do you think actually is useful? Uh, something actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because the government's actually. You have to read it, it's too complicated. Uh, when I got an email <laughs> from the government, it was like this make sure it's patched, make sure it's scanned, and we know when something goes wrong, make sure it's up to date. Anything critical has to be up to date the same day. Everything non critical has to be up to date within two weeks. Um, and uh, then they wanted, and so, and then of course, they wanted to have like logging system. If someone tries to guess the password three times from the same IP address, it goes into the log, and then that gets analyzed. The way, the way my understanding is this um, uh, essential uh, it works is uh, let's see, what else, uh, is you have multiple maturity models. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. And you need to get it to at least maturity model uh, one, which is like the most, uh, at least you're doing something. And then once you complete that, you move to the next and next and next maturity model. And it gets really. I think then you're, the slide you've got where sort of backups and multi factor. Uh -huh. I think that's probably the best example of it. It's certainly the most useful. Yeah. Or, like, like, so we get probably enough questions at the screen. Mm. And more importantly, you know, it helps me jump through a bunch of hoops to the developer and security team on top of the security team within the departments. So, you know, it's, it's for them, their problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, obviously, that's what we're for us, but these are the ones that we know more consumable than I've got project management software where someone has done really expensive huge and modern practices. When we talk about the other ones, you know, the real processes against this using Alright. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is if you do that, I think you would be level one. Uh, and then the next maturity model, um, you can spin up another project with a client or something like that. But I, I would just emphasize even if you don't need to compile something, um, if you got a duplicate site, you know, get them in. Don't go to production and that's the There's a lot more. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've learned a lot about hacking through really hard, you know, because I, there were tens and tens of sites that were injected nonstop. And uh, so um, if you work in an enterprise, it's much less likely to occur. But if you work in small business and they don't really go for big platforms, it's much harder. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, it, yeah, any, uh, let's see, does anyone else ask oh. anything? Okay, regarding hack via JPEG, uh, Bagzad says inject malicious code into the pixels of a photo uh, is of a hacking and transferring secret messages. Yes. Oh, I've always thought this thing. Yeah, there's there's a lot of funny stories. Like I'd love to tell you all. It's just I don't have enough time. But oh, <laughs> so many. And so obviously, you have quite a few different points there. Is there something that you see more? I mean, is there something that really stands out that people can't do? More to it? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're 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 exactly right. Uh, how many Drupal projects are you running? Who, please lift your hand up if you are up to date today on all your modules, all of them. 
on the projects that I'm managing currently. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what are you on? You just started a new job. You're pretty hungry. I've got two projects. Thank you very much. Well, they updated today. But we're talking about like tiny MCE latest version, all the non required. Those are things that are important. They're probably not, but. Ah. Yeah. I suspect that that's going to be good because that's probably from your project. Yes. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we still, okay, so one of the things with multi-factor, as I see all the time, the government has to go through a crazy process to give you SAML access. They will, that SAML access will stop working if you haven't logged in for the last three days or two days or one day. And then they're like, hey, can you build a backdoor? Can you just build a query string? And then if I pass an argument through a query string, it will just go to Drupal login instead of the SAML, just to make it easier, just while we're working on it. So oh, well, SAML kind of ease. Well, yes, because you are managing it using Azure B2C or Active Directory or LDAP, right? So uh, you are off, um, you are offsetting the, you're outsourcing the authentication to uh, the managed provider. So, oh, and, injection. Oh, injection that, it, this is just for access. So if someone stole your password, they can edit the article. Uh, if it's injection, it doesn't work. They just, if there's a contact form on your form, they just inject it, see you later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the MF analytics people are not in the course. No. And that's because of, I, I'm not a good guy, I can't explain it. A way that they have to come up with is Drupal Core, who wants to work with Drupal Core to understand. Mm. But the SSO or sample modules in this module, some of them are part of Drupal Core, they are in front of part of Drupal Core, they're in the security problem. So you can use those and rely on the kind of thing or measure that to do that. So you get something and you get an about it and you get a model and it's good. Whereas if you're just using the thing. And then with that beautiful Asia um, uh, MFA, Uber got hacked with that. Yeah, because they just went, the attacker stole the person's password through a link, then he went. Authenticate, 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 authenticate. The guy started getting multiple messages to authenticate oh, the request in Authenticator. Then the, he just got an email from the support saying, please, can you approve it? We're just testing it. Then you click approve. So that's it. So sneaky. Yeah, so hang on. Yeah. You were in, we just said, in still. Um, you can't collect them in the web and the project was not very, very easy. Yeah. Like, you use Plant for free. You don't get the Plant for free with them. Yeah. You get the same one, but the Plant mm -hmm. is the the Plant is the follow. It's twenty dollars, right? Something like that. Seventy five US per month. Yeah. Per domain, they go seventy five per month per domain. Uh, if you can't afford that, um, maybe AWS. Plant 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 will give you a Plant for. Yeah. Not all the time. Yes, this is on this will be on YouTube next week or so. Next week or two. Um, oh no, we haven't done any slide share, just on YouTube. No, they'll be, they'll be visible. It'll be visible, um, depends if you want, if, did you want to like click through them? Yeah. No, if you so want to know some of the content should be 
Oh, there's nothing, there's um, nothing else, so. too scary in the code. Um, oh, uh, no, it's no, all on yeah. GitHub. I open source the exploit. If you use your running <laughs> X00 in your <laughs> server, you, you just one click to. Yeah. It's like that. yeah. You actually can run shell commands as root uh, through Python by modifying HTTP requests to do this. It's incredible. Um, fun. I love the internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, on. everyone. Awesome. Um, let's stop recording. All right, thank you, Dana. Thank you, Bryn. Thank you again, Dan and Bree and Hide and Seek for hosting. Wonderful job. Really